Come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? (laughs) Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. We're a movie review podcast coming at you every week. You can find us on Apple Podcasts or on YouTube. Please subscribe. Uh, hey, give us a review or give us a comment. We'll uh, read your comment later on Igor's mailbag section. We do right before we do our final wrap ups and let you know whether or not we recommend tonight's movie or not. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, who are these internet radio superstars? Michaela, Holly, Sean, and I'm Colin. Tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by Colin. Colin. Colin, what do we watch tonight? Tonight we watch 1982's Forbidden World. Nobody has any faith in me anymore. <laughs> no, none. I was well, about you, to say, was you were not paying attention, and pause. you were not yeah. looking, so. Trust me. Uh, what do we watch tonight? making eye contact, Sean. We didn't know what you were doing. Yeah. What year? I'm sorry. Uh, 1982. Ooh, 82. Forbidden World. Okay. Forbidden World. What other title is this? Also uh, known as... Mutant. 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 I think it's filmed as Mutant. It's directed by Alan Hausman. Produced by. I don't know what else he did. That's what's more important. Yes. Who? Well, Roger Corman. I mean, it says so right in the front. Roger yeah. Corman's cult classics. Who's Roger Corman? Oh, Roger Corman. I mean, he's the king of B movies. <laughs> C, D, he's E movies. Yeah. Yeah. It's like yeah. E movies. King of gratuity. Anything like, below A. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's like E movies mm-hmm. and gratuity and uh, <laughs> uh, cheap and quick. Yeah. Quick and dirty. Yep. You know, the story I think that everybody ever, always hears when you hear Roger Corman is Little Shop of Horrors, right? The movie yeah. did with, uh, well, Jack Nicholson's in it, but uh, he made that movie in, what was it, like? 12 days? Was it 12? I thought uh, it was even shorter than that. It might have been. Like four days? It's impossible. Yeah. Oh, did you make a movie that fast? I don't know. This took 20. This took 20 days to make this movie. I'm guessing it's mostly uh, uh, food container painting. Was what took so long. There's a lot, of, there's a lot of goo to wrangle. There's a lot yeah. of goo. Yeah, you know, a lot there's of a lot of goo to keep track of, and that's goo continuity too. You know, it's very true. There's a lot of melting people. I do like well. a gooey movie. <laughs> oh yeah, mm-hmm. a gooey movie. Well, this is a special effects extravaganza yeah, from is. like people who can't afford to do special effects extravaganzas. Mm-hmm. Yes, right. They saw a movie called Alien. And they said, let's make a porn parody of it. <laughs> yeah, because there's money in Alien, yep. but we need people. We need asses in the seats for our movie. And we why the hell asses you... on the screen? That's right. Well, because that gets you asses in the seats. That's very true. Yeah. It is a little bit of a sleazoid kind of, uh, well, but a that tad. was, that was Roger Corman's uh, thing. He knew yeah. that uh, sex and violence were the things that sold tickets, especially if you didn't have big stars and you didn't have the cachet of being like, you know, a Ridley Scott. You know, so it was like, as long as we have these exploitation elements and he had a formula, I remember somewhere I read or I heard that he, uh, you know, as far as like, you you know, you had to have so much, uh, topless nudity in a movie, uh, so many, after so many minutes, you would have some here and then you would have some here. And so, so the impression would be that the audience would think that they saw more than there actually was. Although in this movie, you see a lot. Yeah. So, yeah. I think, he, was, oh, I think he has movies where it's more fin- the sleaze is more finessed and more purposeful than this movie though. Like I think uh, he yeah, would, this one we just cut to two women talking yeah, in the shower. Yeah, like yeah. like you do. There's no uh, reason for any of it. In this movie. Like humanoids from the deep, it works with the story and it makes sense. And it like yeah. it it that's a really well finessed sleaze of a movie. This is to this just one. like a yeah. radiation shower now. Yeah. Go for yeah. it. This, yeah. uh, it's a collection of sleazy scenes. I don't know if you can call it a movie. You know what I'm saying? Like this movie is more just like, and then, and then, and then, and then. That's how it so- tells the story is, and then. Yeah. And then. This is yeah. a goddamn movie. Which is how like a five-year-old tells a story. And then, <laughs> and then this happens, and this guy does this, and then this happens. And then the alien ate the naked yep. lady. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that sounds great though. I mean, like I'm buying a ticket for that movie. Well, the movie he did right before this was called uh galaxy of terror. Mm. Also kind of an alien ripoff. That one has Robert England and Sid Haig in it. Oh. And, uh, yeah. Who's the old guy in that one? I'm sorry. I'm blanking on his name, but he's been in a bunch of stuff. Um, so this movie shares a lot of DNA with Galaxy of Terror and a movie that he did before that called uh, Battle Beyond the Stars. You heard yes. of this one? Mm-hmm. So 
Okay, man, I don't even know where to start on this. Do we start with Alien or just start with, okay, so the Roger Corman thing after uh, the success of Alien, then he's like, you know, we got to make, because after the success of Star Wars, need to make Battle Star, Beyond the Stars. Or, yeah. Uh, after Alien, right, and Star Crash. And Star Crash. Right? <laughs> uh, after Alien, he's like, Galaxy of Terror. So th- one of the people who worked for him at that point in time was James Cameron. Mm-hmm. Right, this is where James Cameron actually got his start as an art director uh, for Roger Corman. Roger Corman was working out of a converted, it was a lumber yard at that point that he turned into a movie studio. That's what right. I'm saying. Like, you know, when I watch these movies, I sit there going like, you're not too far off being able to do this yourself. Yeah. Like this really feels like a bunch of guys in a garage, like trying to make a fucking alien only they don't have, you know, they had like a million dollars. Yeah. Right. It's just a bunch of guys in a big garage. Yeah. That's yeah. all this is. In a big garage with a bunch of hot glue and a bunch of probably toxic chemicals and fumes all over the place, like hot glue and hot welding glue, shit hot glue, hot babes. These are the combinations you need. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So James Cameron builds these sets for Galaxy of Terror, right? Roger Corman is like, hey, we got these, we got the spaceship set. You know what we should do with that? We should make another movie with it because, you know, movie. it's like, how do you capitalize on the, the what you have? So you're saying James Cameron. James Cameron painted. designed the set <laughs> for Forbidden World, even though they were for Galaxy. James Cameron. Cam- God James damn Cameron. It, James Chinese Cameron. takeout containers. James I mean, Cameron. I mean, it's isn't brilliant. it genius? <laughs> it's genius. What are we talking about? It's <laughs> genius if you don't notice it. When you do notice it, that's when it, it stops yeah. being genius. Well, <laughs> it does look like those just that padding that is yeah. on spaceship walls. Yeah, like, the entire the entire spaceship, the walls are made of either Chinese takeout containers that are painted like maroon or mm-hmm. egg, uh, egg crate, egg, egg crate like foam, foam. Yeah, yeah, it's the takeout Everywhere. containers like splayed open, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. stuck the on foam the wall. Ones, yeah, yeah. But it looks I like give you that kind of vacuum formed yeah. look of like you know. But, but does, once you it notice like, it, man. Yeah, you can't. Yeah, you unsee can't it. unsee You're just it. Like, oh, you can't I'm see that forever it. now. You shouldn't have said anything. When, yeah, when wow! Uh, no way! No, no, How do you not no. not say that? How well, could he not? <laughs> and then whenever someone gets close to it, you kind of just cringe a little bit because you know how delicate that stuff is. Like, yeah, it's one crack in it. It's quick. yeah, it's doesn't it's like, withstand a whole lot. Yeah, this Although, is a MacGyver movie. Easily replaceable. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, they had to raid. I guess they 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 would raid them. This point, they're saying, well, some of it, I guess, was like a Big Mac, uh, you know, McDonald's, like a hamburger. Sure. Yeah. You know? Oh, back in the day when they used to be in the little foam boxes. Yeah. yeah. So they'd raid the dumpster at McDonald's, like oh, afterwards, God. and oh, wow. they get used ones. That's oh what they said my God! On the commentary track for this movie. That's just, disgusting. I don't know if that's true or not. I mean, look at this movie. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> you imagine what it smelled like. Probably. Like, oh, that Jesus. poor fucking intern Between that had to go do that. All the intern, goop that's in all the dudes. Like, we're, yeah. I mean, yeah. Um. So the uh, the the way that this movie came about was Roger Corman said, "I got this set." Well, actually, it was the um the set of what's the lead character in this? Mike Colby. Mike Colby. Yes, Colby. International or Internet Intergalactic Ranger. Sure. Extraordinary. He's really sexy, sexy is that what he is? Space. Yeah. That's what he is. He's sexy? Chick magnet. I'm Mike going Colby. according to this movie. He's yeah. the sexiest man that ever existed. <laughs> according to this movie. Uh, huh? What this movie says? So. I feel like I can tell what he smells like, and it's not Sure, great. but... Uh, well, he just came out of cryo storage, where they put a little couple Which of... Which means he ice. definitely doesn't smell good. And he was so. actually yeah. frozen. Yeah. And he's wearing Luke Skywalker's Bespin suit. He's a meat popsicle. You know, they actually were trying to get Mark Hamill. Shocking. Oh my well, god! I want to Well, Mark you Hamill can, so you know, bad. you can say that. <laughs> it's easy of, to say. Yeah, we we wanted to get so and so. No, apparently yeah. they got fairly close to getting Mark Hamill, and they were like, because when they saw the suit, what they're year like, is we this put again? Eighty two. Okay. This is between Empire and Return of the Jedi. What else does Mark Hamill have going on? It's like he got a payday, but you still have to work. Yeah. Well, he was. It in, seems uh, like the he Big could Red turn one, things right? down. At that point, in apparently, his I think he down. totally he turned things down. One, yeah. He I got mean, good advice from an agent and mm-hmm. steered clear of Forbidden World, and did, I'm and I'm did actually... fucking everything else. This is the only good advice he got then, because I mean, I'm actually surprised that this was before Jedi, because there was a lot of moments that I thought were were very Jedi like. That's just because of like Jedi and everything's like riffing off of like 50 science fiction magazines yeah. or mm-hmm. something like that. That's true. Um, but they gave the direct. The guy wanted to be a director, right? Roger Corman would always be like, "Yeah, you, you, you think you can be a director? You know, I like yeah. the little thing that you did. Whatever, come on board and <laughs> we'll give you a it. shot." And uh, so he said, uh, basically, 
we just finished on, uh, or we're finishing up in this set on Friday. On Monday, we're destroying it because it has to look destroyed for Galaxy of Terror, right? And so they said, basically, to, uh, Roger Corman said to this director, you got to come up with like a five-minute sequence that'll open a movie uh, that can go anywhere. Uh, <laughs> and you could shoot this weekend. <laughs> On two for two days, so the guy had to like write something that was open ended that could start a movie so that would then the, lead that's into the this space movie. Space battle we got at the beginning of this movie, yeah, which uses mo- footage from Battle Beyond the Stars. I mean, God. it is completely just manufactured out of fucking. You know, <laughs> you gotta you gotta appreciate the ingenuity. Yeah, of that. I think that's what I nuts. like about this is just the 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 mentality yeah. going into this is like we have no business being in this industry, <laughs> None. <laughs> but we're going to attempt to compete with like alien because I mean that's the idea. Like the idea is once you get the a poster on a, in a theater and the film's showing in a theater, yeah. the audience doesn't know the quality difference. They're like, "Ooh, Forbidden World has a monster in it, and I liked yeah. Alien," and this says, you know. A science fiction horror in deep space. It's in a theater. Yeah. So you go to see it. God damn it. Why don't, we, why, why don't we have movies in theaters, Colin? I know. Is well, it harder this, this today than it was? Passed. Yeah, yeah we this live time in a different time. Over, yeah. yeah. We live in a very it's different Studios only want to make movies that make a billion dollars. So. Yeah. God, I wish we could take what we know now and go back then and. Right? Fucking paint food containers and make fucking movies yeah. I mean, what a time to be alive but that's what you know i mean i, I guess that's the thing. what i know now watching this i'm kind of uh <laughs> uh well i mean i guess it's nostalgic but for the kind of the low budget or mid-budget like science fiction movie mm. or the space movie because now everybody sets everything in a house you know if you have no right. money you do a horror movie in a house you yeah. don't do it in space Sit in the house because you can't afford to do it mm-hmm Otherwise, it looks really bad, you know, comparatively. Yes. But I mean, I suppose this looked bad, you know, compared to the other movies. There were like two hallways. Yeah. So, yeah. They just go back up and down the same hallway over and over yeah. and over just again. Just make sure you like, can shoot it from both ends. Uh-huh. And that's four hallways right there. Yeah. That's all you need. And a science lab that looked very much like it was straight out of like Mystery Science Theater. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then you have your mm-hmm. Which came later, right? So that's yeah. what maybe they were riffing mm-hmm. on. And like they did it in those kind of movies. I'm sure. Has this movie been on uh, Mystery Science? I'm sure Theater? it has. I'd be shocked if it hadn't. Oh, my, it should be. Yeah. As long as you got the pretty girl running down the hallway, no one's going to pay attention to it. It's like that's the hallway she just went down. Mm-hmm. No yeah. one's going to care. Roger Corman. He, he knew these things. It's fucking genius. <laughs> <laughs> and he continued because he had. Uh, well, I mean, he started out actually making real movies, right? He did the uh, the Edgar Allan Poe cycle, they call them. Uh, Vincent Price was in them. Mm-hmm. Uh, the uh, How, Fall of the House of Usher and The Pit and the Pendulum. And, mm-hmm. uh, like, he did a bunch. Mask yeah. of the Red Death? He did The Mask of the Red Death. I mean, he did several, like, uh, anthology shorts of Poe stories. Mm-hmm. I mean, all of them were decently produced 50s movie, 50s and 60s movies that look like 50s and 60s movies, right? But somewhere he got the idea that, you know, he stopped directing and started producing, and he was just like this money pincher who figured out, like, I can spend a tiny amount of money for a maximum return, and we'll just crank these things out, you know? Mm-hmm. And in the 50s and 60s, he'd get big stars like, uh, what was it, Boris Karloff, I think he got for The Terror, uh, and they, I think they shot that in, like, he had Boris Karloff, and they had sets from some other movie. And I think they did something like Karloff shot all his stuff in three days, but he's the top built guy in the movie. Hmm. Tim and Jack Nicholson. Damn. Yeah. Because Corman launched the careers of uh, Jack Nicholson, Francis Ford Coppola, Dementia 13 was his. Joe Dante did the howling and piranha for him. And, yep. you know, all these guys like came or Jim, James Cameron, you know, they'd all like start there and then graduate to bigger and better things. Yeah. Um. But I think, uh, Alien was probably a sore spot for Roger Corman because uh, Dan O'Bannon actually, when he wrote the script, took mm-hmm. it to Roger Corman to see if he'd make it. Mm-hmm. And Roger Corman turned him down. Oh, shit. Oh. Did he? Well, that's his fault. Why then, would he so... turn him down? Well, well, because, too much money. But you got to think like what the script for Alien read like before. This is before H.R. Giger. This is before Ridley Scott. Mm. You know? Yeah. True. Yeah, but that yeah. seems in his wheelhouse, though. Yeah, you know, so the fact that he turned it down—that's all on him. I was think, it? Was it too good? Yeah. Was that the problem? It feels. Yeah. <laughs> what did he read that he's just like, nah? Well, I keep hearing uh, that, um, like, uh, who was it? Um, Walter Hill, and uh, who's the other guy who's on the the producer of Alien? 
but they rewrote the script because they yeah. said it was terrible, and so they rewrote it. Although it was Ridley Scott that actually brought Dan O'Bannon uh, back, you know, as but a if it's terrible, that sounds even more in his wheelhouse. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not sure what he didn't see in the. Maybe he thought it was yeah. too expensive. Oh, that's yeah, it's got to be it. Mm-hmm. It's like oh, it's gonna be too much. Yeah, mm-hmm. but we just can't do it, or there's no market for this kind of thing. Horror and science fiction, nobody's gonna, you know. I don't. There's no way he thought something was too expensive. He would just be like, "We can do this this way." Yeah, I feel like he'd be like, "We just have to cheap it down, and we can pull this off." Mm-hmm. Well, maybe he just wasn't chasing those types of movies. Maybe, then I mean, I'm trying to think. Probably. Like, I mean, obviously, Star Wars. It depends on when you know the the script for Alien showed right. up. Because O'Bannon, Dan O'Bannon. Uh, you know, went to school with John Carpenter. They made um, a movie called Dark Star together as like the student thesis movie or mm-hmm. whatever. And then it actually got a theatrical release. And then uh, O'Bannon wrote Alien. I mean, he since when I wrote Total Recall, he directed Return of the Living Dead. And, you know, we've talked about some of his movies on the show before. But um, I think O'Bannon is the guy who's like really into like the 50s pulp science fiction stuff mm-hmm. so he had seen movies like it came the it the terror from beyond space and right. planet of the vampires and stuff like that made something in that you know he, i think he wrote for heavy metal magazine ah. and i think like some of the uh you've seen the heavy metal movie the cartoon the 80s yep. movie mm-hmm. no i, I think so. he did some of the segments and the b52 was his and that kind of thing so i think uh you know that's kind of more like what what I think Alien probably would have been before Ridley Scott got involved with it. Mm-hmm. You know, it wouldn't have had that look that we think of it now or the pace or anything. It'd be spacemen right. going into pyramids and some kind of low budget science fiction, right. you know, uh, thing. I feel like, uh, <laughs> I feel like Ridley Scott has turned into Roger Cor- <laughs> Corman now. In the most recent Alien <laughs> Yes, movie. he totally yes. is. I he's, feel like that's, he's gone back to his I roots. I feel like we've gone. <laughs> Full circle. Switched. Time is a flat full, circle. Yeah, it really is. I think, uh, yeah, I think really Scott is the the Roger Corman of today. Only now he has With all way the money. more he money. Just yeah. Do yeah. Like, yeah, we'll just do it. Yeah. We can afford it. Yeah. I mean, who cares? And then they make ridiculous shit that Roger Corman would have made. The thing mm-hmm. is, we, we keep falling for it. With Ridley Scott, we every do. time we're like, "Oh, maybe this is the return to form." Every time we think, I don't that. think he's returning never to form. we're in a we're in an abusive relationship with yeah. Ridley Scott. Yeah. At this point, I think we are. <laughs> well, he's like he's trying to in a later day Ridley Scott. He's trying to reclaim like his earlier successes. I mean, he went after both Alien and Blade Runner. Yeah, you know, because he produced the sequel to Blade Runner. Um, but with Alien, I think it got away from him. I think because for a period of time, and I don't know where you guys stand on this, but like. Aliens was considered to be the superior film. Yes. Right? And he uh, feels like he hates that. Yeah. Because he's like, Alien is mine. Yes. Right? And all these other directors, I guess that's the thing. Like, once you have somebody after James Cameron, you know, you have David Fincher, then you have John Pierre Junet. And, and yeah. so it's like, so then it's Ridley Scott and three other guys. It's not Ridley Scott and then James Cameron. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. So he's like, no, 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 it's mine. So he's like, you know, it's gone off and done Alien versus Predator and whatever. And so he's trying to bring it back and reclaim the. Yeah. Even you mentioned it in the conversation we had. He's, uh, as he's doing his new Alien movies, he's slowly, he's phasing out any James Cameron mythology. Mm-hmm. Like you said, he's getting rid of the queen and everything. Like that is not the life cycle of these aliens. Mm-hmm. It's something completely different. So he's slowly bringing it back to just like what he thinks it should be. Mm-hmm. So yeah, like you said, he's reclaiming it. But then to also taking it off in a weird like, but what about the people who made the aliens? What about David? And what about the origins? I mean, like, no, no, no. What we about, don't we don't care about any of that. What about tiny xenomorphs that yeah. burst from people's chests and just well, he fuck yeah. I mean, because that's what he's doing. He's fucking up the entire origin he's story it up, of the Colin. alien. Yeah. It's like at some point you have to have like the queen bug gives birth to a bunch of little bugs, right? <laughs> that's how it works. I just can't imagine like twenty years ago telling like my past self, being like, "You're gonna watch an alien movie in the future. You're gonna see this guy and a twin version of himself play the flute together mm. for like five minutes." I'll do the fingering. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I just, That's going to be I like a major don't. scene in an alien it's, movie. <laughs> it's just, it's I can't just, with that. I, I can't, so you think I that can't was, with that movie. Was that, see, that's why I always <laughs> wonder. It's like, movie. was that made as a double entendre? Or is this like, because I don't know. Ridley Scott li- makes movies about guys who own vineyards. 
right? Mm -hmm. That movie he did with Russell Crowe. So I'm like, yeah. this guy is year. extremely wealthy. Is that what it was called? I think, it's I think he's year. out of touch. I think he's well, wildly he's, he's out of touch. He's super rich, and so he lives I in vacations so. in Florence and li has a villa somewhere in, in Italy mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so to him, it, the fingering is the actual term for I'm that, sure what you're is, doing there. But yeah. Right, but did this no one know? <laughs> but for the bourgeois, yeah. we sit did there going, no like, one know. Uh, so uh, is it intended uh, as uh, 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 Ridley, Ridley? I don't know if you know this. Uh, that's that's going to come across as funny. How yeah. many people I, told I, him that along yeah. the way? And he was like, no, I it is my vision. I, I can't believe that no one in that table read didn't giggle. I know. Sure. Fassbender somebody, should have been like. Somebody had to have. But this is. You know Fassy hey, did. He Fassbender, had to have. Fassbender also played a character named Harry Hole. So, you know, <laughs> let's not put it. Let's not true. say Fassbender would have said something because he let true. that slide too. So. That's yeah. true. Who was it? Uh, wait, I can't remember. I saw that movie and I can't remember if they pronounced it. Snowman? Well. They yeah, say yeah, Hole. Oh, yeah, they say Hole. In the book, it's supposed to be Hole. It's Hole. Yes, but in the movie, it's Hole. But in the movie, it's Hole, yeah. Harry Hole. It's just like, Jesus oh Christ. man, a this, snowman. I, I, I've Stop. decided that I must watch this movie. It's, I have not seen it, but I've it makes good. no I, I sense. Must watch yeah, it. but it's not like, I don't know if you, it's not entertaining either, except to care. hear Val Kilmer, who you know, has had uh, throat, throat cancer. cancer yeah. 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 So they dub him over. Yeah. And it's, so it's wild. Like, it's like, what the fuck am yeah, I doing? Yeah, no, I got to watch this movie. I decided this. Yeah. If you can make any sense of it, let us know. Oh, probably not. I just want to. Just I, I have you just want to experience. I just want to experience it. it. Yeah, and I just feel like I need to. I get a Again. promotional kit for that movie. Because uh, well, because one Did of my friends. Snowman. Yeah, and the head comes off. <laughs> what? It has a, it's a little oh, like no. stuffed animal oh, snowman, oh. and the head velcros oh, on. It has oh, velcro, no. so it pop it off. Is there like yeah. a severed head underneath that? There should no, be. No, it's just a little snowman head. Oh damn. <laughs> no, and then I have a t-shirt you know, with a t-shirt dude it has like a decapitated snowman on the back say, like a stick drawing police, you could have yeah yeah it says that on the back of the guys. shirt <laughs> it's not a shirt you can really wear in public no <laughs> no yeah no I mean just hang on to it that's one of your movie shirts it goes yeah. in the closet yeah, yeah. like you remember this shit yeah. yeah, it's like my mowing the lawn shirt. You know, it's, you it's one of those shirts. Mm -hmm. Advertising while mowing the lawn. <laughs> that's right. Yep. That's. I wonder if they ever think about that when they're handing out their swag. It's like this is going to be like advertising to this neighbors. Is, yeah. mowing the the snowman's pretty cool. I keep that out. Sure, the that'd snowman's be, pretty cool. Yeah, that's going to be turned inside out and become a gym shirt. Yeah, that's exactly yep. what that is. Yeah. It's a go to bed shirt. And, yeah, yeah it's, pajamas. It's, 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 it's just like, oh shit, I spilled something. Uh, for me, it's grab a, that or, shirt. Like I'm sure you get. It's a dye my hair shirt. It's yeah, like, oh, dye my hair. I don't go. give a yes. fuck if it gets. Yeah. Especially if it's a black shirt, I'm like, oh, I'll be fine yes. then. Mm -hmm. like, oh, I feel paint things. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna put on this shirt. Maybe you have to go paint a set for a, a low budget movie. for a very <laughs> low budget movie, yeah. like. Mm -hmm. Forbidden like World. Forbidden World. This is a Forbidden Planet movie, right? There is. We did it mm -hmm. on this show. Actually, there's an episode yeah, we did. Okay. Were you here for that one? I don't think I. I don't never watch Forbidden. Planet. Forbidden Planet has Leslie Nielsen in it. Back when he was serious, before the Naked Gun and airplane movie. <laughs> I don't serious. know that period yeah. of uh, his oh, yeah. career. Yeah, yeah. Wait, it's what was fantastic. Forbidden Zone. Is it, is it forbidden? Yep, we did that oh, one did on that this one. show. That also, was also. Danny Elfman, <laughs> or his Danny brother, going into all the Forbidden territories. Yeah, yeah. Um. Well, I'm assuming that's where they got this, this title. Right, so it's when we do forbidden, forbidden Love planet. or Forbidden Sin or... <laughs> uh, it's Forbidden Love, the Brook Shields, and Forbidden oh, Endless maybe. Love, sorry. Um, okay, so Alien being the movie that like all these other folks try to copy. There yes. is a galaxy of alien clones out there. I think they're still making them, uh, even fairly recently, in the movie Life, if you watch that, is pretty much an alien movie. Like, yeah. when I saw Life... I sat there going like life is basically the bigger budget version of like Leviathan or Deep Star Six mm -hmm. or one of you know because that was the 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 late eighties early nineties version of the Alien uh, movie we're going to do it underwater uh, but in the eighties like the Italians did Contamination not good but it's an Alien uh, thing uh, there's a movie called Creature which I was actually thinking of bringing to this yeah. show. But when I watched it, it's too close to Alien. Mm. They're like, wow, this really is Alien. Well, it's all blue and, I, you know, the whole thing. <laughs> the outdoors look like uh, the planet. Um, well, if it's too close to Alien, Colin, then you need to get a movie that mixes another movie within it, like Terminator. Off the top stop of my it. Head. <laughs> you stop oh, it. I'm just thinking of things off the top of my head. Stop like it. Shocking right Dark. Like Shocking Dark. Get out. Which we also did on this show. <laughs> but see, I guess that's the thing. It's like, you know, at least they knew... Well, making Forbidden World that like we, we're inspired by Alien, we want to rip off like the major beats of it. Sure, we've got mm -hmm. a distress call from a planet. Somebody has to respond to on the planet. There's some kind of uh, biological thing that uh, is all gooey. It hatches things come out of it, and whatever it gets inside you, it, you know, has uh, you know that kind of thing is still yeah. happening. 
Uh, you're going to be crawling around in duct work at some point. Right. Um, they do go outside, and then it's Star Wars. It's Tatooine. And, and yeah, no, basically at that point. And you're going to fight a big rubber black monster right. uh, at the end of the You know, it's mm-hmm. completely big puppet uh, by the end of the move. It's a spider. It's, but after that, it's like, it makes its own choices. I thought it looked like, like Venom Octopus. Kind of. Yeah. It is Venomish. It's Venom Octopus. Who came first, though? Forbidden World. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. You heard it here first. They ripped this off for Venom. Okay. That's what you were saying, right? Sure. I don't know. Venom right. might have existed in the comics. I was like, no, I think he was a uh, no, 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 no. He, he was, was a nineties. Yeah. He was a nineties creation. Yep. Him and Carnage yep. came around. Todd McFarlane, mm-hmm. I think. Didn't he come up with Venom? Yes, he created yeah. Venom. Um. Okay. So the plot of this movie. Yes. Yeah. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, this movie. Just yeah. explain it to yeah. me. Go ahead. Does so to explain to the. I know it. Explain to the audience what they know. Yeah, we we totally we know. Totally know. I it. followed this whole movie yeah. so well. So just let, I know, let I know them exactly, know. exactly what was going on. Well, that the sounds like someone volunteering to explain the plot of this movie to the audience. It's theater of the mind, Holly. <laughs> what this is, is this radio. movie about? That's right, because there's everyone who's listening to this hasn't seen this. That's movie. true. Everyone, um, <laughs> every single one. Yeah. Oh wait, no, it was somebody did actually ask a couple of weeks ago oh, if we yeah. would uh, was if Dom? we would. No. If we would what? If we were watching this movie or an alien clone. Oh. And I was like, I had just watched it. And I'm like, you know what? We should do. <laughs> we, have, we, we haven't done it before, right? <laughs> have we done an alien clone I mean, before? Shocking Dark was close to ali- close enough to aliens. Oh, yeah. it's aliens. I don't know. Yeah, we... but how many knockoff movies do we need to watch? <laughs> I mean, all there's not, yeah, all of them. I, this is, I, I don't you, think you we don't need to watch, watch all of them. I really watch, don't. But I'm saying you don't watch the actual movie on this show. You watch the knockoffs so you can talk about the actual right, movie. Right. That's what we do. Yeah. Right. That's very true. <laughs> you can't watch the actual one. That's just, uh, those are too good. That's right. You don't watch Critters. Because you, know, so you don't well, watch no. Gremlins. You watch Critters. Or you watch Munchie. How, or you how watch, dare uh, you? Yeah. Uh, sir? <laughs> no, I'm saying you don't watch Gremlins. Oh, shit. You did bring Gremlins. We did what? No, I Tom didn't brought that. No, I we think did do Kremlins did on this Tom show. Tom bring it or did fucking or maybe Brent? Brent, did. Brent it feels more like a Brent pick. That movie. Um, well, did Robert Zemeckis direct it? No, that yes, was, that was Joe Dante. <laughs> Joe Dante, who started working with uh, Roger Corman, bringing it all back. Around. It was a joke. Um, so, intergalactic space ranger Mike yes. Colby, Mike. Yeah. played by Jesse Vint. Mm-hmm. Sure, uh, Dallas. Has to. Well, <laughs> he yeah. looks like Patrick Duffy. He does. But imagine him in Luke Skywalker's Bespin suit, and he oh. has and to frozen. go frozen. Right, like Han with ice <laughs> crusties on his that face. That to me looked like the Prometheus chamber. It too. did. I was yeah. like this. I'm like some Prometheus vibes. Of the I was like, yeah. the, I'm like the they're trying too hard to show that he's fr- in fro. He's in cryostasis. Yeah. It's yeah. like we get it. You don't have I, to put little icicles on his face. We understand. <laughs> Because so, under the lighting, you can't tell what it is. He's just got it's crusties red on his lighting. face. And he has, he has a robot sidekick. Bless. Because in space, you have robot sidekicks. God bless the robot sidekick. Yeah. Who yeah. is unfreezing him. He's defrosting it him. looks like a Chinese action figure stormtrooper. Yes, he does. does. Mm-hmm. Yes, he does. Yeah. It was like a stormtrooper. And then was it the original Battlestar Galactica helmet? Is yes, that what I'm it was thinking that too. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it was like a cross between the two. Yeah. 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 Okay, I don't know who or what was chasing them. Well, I don't know either. It was. Uh, did they ever? Do we ever know? Just a random. Just a random space random chase. Because when you're in space, random space chase, and people okay. are always fucking with you. Yeah. All right. Yeah, the place where there are no people. There's, there's space always pirates. Sure. fucking with you. Space pirates. There's space pirates. That's okay. a whole other movie. Right? I know. Yeah. I know. I know. Are we ever going to watch it. that? You know, I've never seen Space Pirates. I don't Sean. know what Space Pirates is. I didn't know that was. I know it's been mentioned. Was that Disney movie? Was it Treasure Planet? They were like steampunk space pirates. Yes. 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 It was. I hear you loud and clear, Colin. Um, <laughs> oh, oh, I, uh, I got gotcha. you. They got gotcha. a copy of it at Dollar, or not Dollar, uh, at uh, Discreet Discreet Play, Play. and it has been sitting there for years. And now, of course, I wonder he's why. never seen it. <laughs> we've just made it. He said uh, the magic words. Yeah, we've just made it uh, popular. Now, next Space time I'm going to go in there, it's going to be gone. Space Pirates. Um, so, so we don't know why they're being chased. No. It's a random. But he, um, it is literally a cold open that makes, yeah, does no not sense. connect to the rest of the movie. He's yeah. defrosted to help with the space chase. Yes. I okay. feel like seizures, man. So Dude, boy. the this? flashing lights. Sweet oh, Jesus. God. I've never had a headache so quickly it, in oh. my life. It's too much. <laughs> Seriously. Like, they can't just shoot I've, I've at n- things. They have to do their flashes on the screen to Constantly. really drive home the point. Well, even beyond that, yes. they're doing this really extremely odd avant-garde. 
uh, editing style that yeah. they employ throughout like the movie where there's like flash frames of scenes that we haven't seen yet. Right. Yeah. There, yes. There's foreshadowing for some reason. I, yeah, I don't understand. Is, seeing the, and nobody's seeing this. They're just doing it. All right, yeah. I got this. This covered. is an artistic Because at choice. first I thought when he, I, if I thought when he was like waking up from his space hibernation right. that these were like flash, like flashbacks, like he was having memories right. as he was waking up. But no, no, these were things to come. Yeah. What the fuck for? I don't no. understand. Nope. Okay, because uh, space, right? There's a curvature and all this. Near are, you, are you going to like no. some space time continuum so, bullshit right yeah, now? Past and future, and he's waking up. It's all blended he, together. Exactly. Time Fuck you. Up, no. No. Oh, what? That was it. There we go. We solved it. Okay. Uh-huh. Moving on. So after the cold open, he's summoned to this space base where they have uh, space space. they space have space. a problem. Uh, Did we know. see them summon him? Did I miss that? The robot said, we've been called to get oh, Rex Gallon okay. 17 okay. or whatever. I do recall that. All yeah. the time off has been recalled. Yeah. Sorry, sir. Maybe next time. Like, damn it. I wanted to go home. Yeah. But now he's got to go to. Yeah. Because he was like. Astron Zelta. Because apparently minor. he's been frozen for like a really fucking long time. Because he's like, your son is as is older, older than, than you, you are now. Yeah. And the guy's just like, oh, okay. Well, like, he doesn't give a shit. He doesn't give <laughs> like, a shit. Holy shit. Like, you are the worst Shitty dad of all dads. time. In yeah. the future. Shitty space ads. Shitty, shitty space, space ads. Dude. Well, I mean, what can you do? Because he's a magnet. I mean, you know, the guy's out there. He's got to beat He's probably got 50 kids him. all over the place. Yeah. That's true. Because it's just he's women throwing themselves fucking his way him. across the galaxy. He lands at this place, and uh, what's her name? Barb? Barb. Barb. Barb is making the eyes at him, like, right as soon as he Hard walks Hardcore. Hardcore. Holy shit. Is she giving him that? Sa- oh. <laughs> she just walk up and lick his face. <laughs> Seriously. As he walked in. Seriously. It's amazing. Barb is played by June Chadwick. Mm. June Chadwick was a staple of my childhood ah. because she was a character named Lydia in the TV show V. Anybody remember V? She was one of the visitors. That's right. I don't remember her lizard face, but I just remember being like... Well, if it was a show when you were a kid, then none of us remember you never, it. You don't know V? I've, I've heard of it, but I've never seen alien. it. Oh, What's my God. his name? With Robert Englund. And... Didn't it get like rebooted at some point? There's yeah, more than awful, one series of God V. God awful yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah it was not, I watched it. It was not good. The, the new reboot, one? Yeah. Oh, it's terrible. Not yeah, good. Monica Baccarin yeah. of uh, Deadpool fame. Deadpool fame and, and, and Serenity. Not, and just, oh, just that was a bad yeah, was show. Bad. But the original one, brilliant. Robert England's in it, Mark Singer, and uh, June it. Chadwick is in V, the final battle. June Chadwick. Series. Um, but anyway, she is uh, making the eyes at our hero, Mike Colby. Mm. Yes, she is. Um, He's been summoned there because he, as a ranger, he apparently is the only person in the galaxy or in this quadrant of the galaxies, this other it works in science fiction, that's, yes. that's qualified to deal with the problem they have, which is they have an embryonic life, life form that they created on the ship that has gotten loose and killed all of the uh, test animals uh, in their lab. And so he's there to basically... Exterminate it? Is that what's happening? I don't. He's an exterminator. Is that's that what, what we're thought. getting at? But they, you would initially think that, but they find it, and they see it, and it's there, and they don't kill. They like step over all these dead cats because the whole room is like a slaughterhouse. There's Rabbits blood everywhere. And well, we didn't clean and it up because we want we yeah. wanted you to see it. Yeah. Uh. Right. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, same reason to, that they keep on their bloody clothes the entire. Not everyone. Most people shower in this movie, but the the, the scientist <laughs> too often, too often. But the scientist uh, keeps his bloody clothes on the entire movie, uh, mad even scientist. at dinner. Yeah. Even, at, even dinner. at dinner, it's brilliant. The guy who should have been played by Brad Dorif. Yes, this is Brad. This is made for Brad Dorif. Yeah, he's a very twitchy scientist who yes. you know, has to. He is the exposition dump, and they keep giving you exposition Hopefully. from this guy throughout the entire movie. Because the alien is always changing. There's yes. a little bit of the thing in here, maybe. Yeah, uh, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. a little bit. Um, but the thing is cocooned itself inside the incubator, and then of course it gets loose. This guy goes and sticks his fucking head in the janitor who's coming in to like clean up. <laughs> yep. Sticks his head in there like a big dumb fuck. Uh, speaking of which, he is the guy who uh, is Buck from uh, Kill Bill. Remember? Oh, uh, yeah. My name is Buck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah I like the fuck. Uh, he uh, gets the thing on his face. And it uh, like eats and burrows into his brain, and so then there's the 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 body of this guy is like missing half of his face. You can see his brain, 
right? It's a prosthetic effect. Yeah. But this, he's still alive. This thing yes. has like chewed through his skull. Yes. And part and part of his brain is gone. But he's, he's alive. still breathing. Yeah, he's still alive. He's still his tissue is still viable. And they're like, where did the thing go? We don't know. Somehow it got out of here. So was Mike yeah. supposed to kill it? Because how come he just didn't kill? They like went to dinner. They're like, come on in, see right. our yeah. problem. We got this creepy looking thing hanging out in the in the incubator. All right, now let's go to dinner. Right. Nobody yeah. like the head scientist doesn't want him to kill it. Why'd they call him down there? Just to catch it? I but it's caught. Yeah, I'm it's not in sure. A fucking, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he's the only one qualified to use some kind of weapon on it. But no. he basically is sitting there going so. like, "Well, let's see what we can do about your problem." If I see something that's not human and it moves, I shoot it. That's what he does. He saw it and he didn't yeah. shoot it. Because the doctors keep, the doctor who created the thing, or the guy who's in charge of the thing on the station is like, you know, you can't. You got to listen to me. We have to, this is science. We got to protect it in the name of science. That's right? Always, that's always the reason. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In the name of science. Did he go fuck Barb like in between that moment too? Did that also happen? <laughs> Was it after it was, dinner or it was before a, the thing? The it was thing after ate the dinner. Dude? It was after dinner. Okay, so the thing ate right. the dude. It was after space. dinner. Yeah, we because have, it was bedtime. Right, he was going through the door, and she's like, "Hey, I have a shiny robe." I hear yeah. you're a really good <laughs> troubleshooter. Is that yeah, what, yeah. Like yeah. To, and then she's like, "Would you like to see some trouble?" She's like, "That doesn't work." It does. It doesn't <laughs> it, work. It worked. Your, your wordplay is shit. It, it totally worked. But there. that's she, when she, you know, started opening a robe. Right. So whatever, whatever she said does not matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Yeah, so they get busy while the uh, other guy for like fifteen minutes. Yeah, what's the other guy's job? I don't know, but he's, he's sitting security. Watching. He's, yeah. yeah, sure. He's watching the security he's watching, cam. Yeah, monitors and yep. playing with his yo-yo. Yeah, yeah that's not say, a metaphor. No, like the, why not just go for the jack off motion or like know. why why like fake it's it all, with the toy all, he's playing? With. Yeah, I don't. Metaphor, but this, he's like breaking out a sweat. He's got sweat. Yeah. He's playing with a toy. Yeah. It's, it's cause he's and the way fun. he's snapping he's, it in his hand, it's, it's like. It's because he's frustrated, yeah. Michaela. It's because he wants Barb, can't have her. It's okay, just all but, about frustration. Like, why is this movie above, like, it's too showing classy. him actually it's too classy, uh, Or at least yeah. alluding to it. You know, uh, it well, that would have probably got you an X rating in Right. Plus, also, this is not to, for. Like, show it, show it. But, you no, know, like. That's what I'm saying. Even the show implication. Show the hand going down the pants, and that's it. I think even that implication in 1980 probably would have got The full frontal in this movie didn't get it? No, that, no, that, was that makes no fucking I think. sense. No, I'm, PG the audience doesn't had, want to see that. Yeah, yeah, I'm actually okay that they didn't go that route. Right, because nobody and, wants and, to see that. Women yeah, don't want to see that. I'm not saying I want to see it. I'm saying I don't understand why this movie, that's where they draw the line. Because they know that's not a moneymaker. <laughs> and you say like he was frustrated because he wanted Barb. Oh, you know he's gotten Barb before. I don't think so. Oh, I think he has. Oh, I don't think so. I was wondering about that because I I'm like, you know, Barb is like super horny, but is she super horny for dude because he, Colby, because he shows up, you're a new face. Because all basically we all know each other and we don't sleep around. Mm. So a new guy comes in, it's like they can sleep with him. I think that's why they're so that's I figure that's why they jump on him as soon as he walks in the door. Yeah. There's that's him got, and there's Tracy, guess. the other girl. Is that her yeah. name? Tracy totally eventually Tracy. goes for a uh, Tracy Baxter. That's she it. goes yeah. <laughs> she goes to go, you know, take a, a, a soak in the sauna. Yeah. Yeah. And Mike comes in. Like, what are you doing here? I guess it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. That's all it was. Because he's a magnet. Ugh. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> and then Barb comes in like, what were you doing? He's Showing creepy. each other he's your... Got, he gives them creepy eyes. He's leering. He's like, huh? Yeah. Huh? He gives them creepy side eye. It's... Ugh. I don't understand. I don't understand. It's, well, uh, it's the 80s. It must have worked on not future, future women. Right. It's this like, is the future. Of the 1980s. It's um, like in the 80s, like, they just didn't try to have a hot guy. Like, I at least they didn't was. have to. I think that was 80s like, hot. They, yeah, I don't think they uh, had to it, because yeah, women didn't see these movies. Yeah. <laughs> this uh, is not a movie necessarily tailored for a female audience. I think that's just no. the way that, like, the 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 taste has gone in the Hollywood system now. It's like, now you have to have like be fucking ripped to play anyone now. Yeah. And it's... It no, wasn't like the, that back in the 80s. No, back Brad Pitt day, changed like, that all with Thelma and Louise. I remember yeah. like all the articles that's at true. the time. Uh-huh. Yeah, it was like everybody true. was like, fuck, now I got to get jacked because Brad Pitt right. fucking took his shirt off and Thelma and Louise. Mm-hmm. Dudes could pull it off back then, but not now. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's a whole new world. Mm-hmm. Or if you are going to be like not super ripped, like that's a character trait of your character. You know what I'm saying? Like that's how mm-hmm. it is now. Like if 
there's a there's a reason for it if you're not jacked. Like you gotta be like Seth Rogen, you know? You gotta be like the frumpy dude that's going after a girl way out of his league and that's like your only story, right. you know? That's the I know. If Seth Rogen was in a movie like this, it would be uh what's that show that uh, Seth McFarlane is in the Star Trek thing? Uh, oh, the yeah. Orville. It would be right, yeah. it'd be the comedy version. You can't actually do it and be like, No, no, it's serious. You totally take him as a leading right. man. And- the long shot. Yeah. The Chick voice. magnet in space. Not what I thought it was. Um so anyway, this uh, thing gets loose because it makes a big because it has to. It makes a big yeah. puddle out of this guy, which is actually kind of cool because he goes through several. It's s- very series. cool. His metamorphosis is say, very like, cool. That's that's one thing about this movie is both the creature and the victims go through series of changes. Mm. Like the the thing starts in that cocoon thing. Which what would we? How would we describe the cocoon thing? It looks it's, like the face hugger with like, hair. Yeah, uh, it's got long arms. It's like a or a fuzzy face hugger. Yeah, I don't or know. It looks like a Q-tip version of a face hugger. I don't know. I don't it's it's weird. It's like uh, it's like got four long arms. And just, yeah, I don't know. it is. It's just a cocoon suspended in midair. Like a air, puffer basically. fish with a longer, like a starfish yeah. with longer. It kind of uh, reminds me of breeze. one of um one of Mrs. Dietz's sculptures from Beetlejuice a little bit. A little bit, doesn't it? But then the thing fucking gives birth to itself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which sh- is disgusting, and as Michaela liver. pointed out, one of the grossest plops in movie history. The second week in a row, we're getting <laughs> oh, gross God. plops it's like <laughs> nasty. And at that point, it looks like a cross between a liver and like a fucking stingray. It does. It's, yeah. it, 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 it does. suctions up the glass. Yeah. Yeah. but they can't actually do the suction, suction. very well. No, no, no. no that's sliding that is the glass. slowly <laughs> sliding it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that that part, and then like the scene after that reminded me a lot of Rock and Roll Nightmare. How there was a lot of like a hand doing all the acting mm. for the puppet. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. Jesus, the fucking puppets. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, a lot of this movie, like once you've seen the movie Ed Wood, right? Yeah. Where, uh, Martin Landau's Bela Lugosi is fighting with that giant uh, squid. Yep. Oh, my God. <laughs> I mean, yeah. When you're watching these people fight with these monsters, that's what's happening. And yeah. You can't help but see that. No, yeah. it's like, yep. help me, help me get it off of me. Ah, you know, oh, yeah. acting. This is what it takes. This is the caliber yeah. the level of which a performer is willing to go to. Um, but anyway, the thing gets loose throughout the ship. The Colby's got to go track it down. He wants to kill it. The science staff wants to save it. Um, there's nude showers because the girls get like some goo on them and have to go shower off. Together. Uh, Colby and one of the guys, well, we meet the cast, which is basically like, uh, you know, it's a, they're, it's the working class hero heroes of alien. Yep. Right. Um, and they have to go out. They have to go outside. I guess that's one of the bigger changes, right? From this and Alien. Although Galaxy of Terror does an exterior shot, which looks like Aliens, because James Cameron built the shit, and it's like this is his dry run. It's all blue and like the front projection screens, and all that. It's like this oh, is nice. Aliens. So if you want to see uh, what he was doing before that, I mean, yeah, uh, Galaxy of Terror. Anyway, so they go outside in the burnt sun, twin sun, uh, you know, planet scape. Tatooine. Of Tatooine, yeah. only with a little bit of uh, a blowing uh, smoke through it. Uh, this is how you do it, right? When you get your guys out there, you blow a bunch of smoke around in the desert, you're on an alien planet. Mm-hmm. And they got to shoot. The, Star Trek pulled it off very well. There was a shot where the thing was like hanging between a couple of rocks. Yeah. yeah. A giant one, a like giant another one. cocoon. Yeah. You could see the fabric and the stitches. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It it waved in the wind. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but then, you know, I thought like that was like, well, this is pretty embarrassing until they shot it. And the guy's like, it's empty. It was just another cocoon. Yeah. The monster has left it already. Yeah. Then they find the monster. And this is where we get our this first is the, good this is shot the, of the the mutant. I'm like, did we jump ahead? Yeah. Like 30 minutes. How yeah. are we here? Because they round a corner and there's just a big fucking, it's the alien at yeah. this point. It's a big fucking spider alien. And the dude's just like standing in front of it. Like he's communing with it at some point. Like he had to run and find it and be like, yeah, only I be- can understand yeah, it. Yeah, he's standing very close to it. Yeah, he's an idiot. Yeah, because he's like, don't shoot it. I got to save it. Yeah. Yeah. Now you say it looks like the alien. Oh, I said That's it, being the, very the, kind. I said, it's got like a, if they, <laughs> if they made it into a cartoon. Like or if a, you a built caricature. it out of, I mean, what, your sofa. Yeah, and <laughs> trash bags. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> sofa and trash bags, you'd get that. Because it's a spider with a head. It, it looks like one of the uh, like the, the bombs on a chain in Mario. Yes, yeah, just, it does. Just, just teeth 
and that. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's what it looks like. And that's the extent yeah. of how it can move too. Yeah. Like it, do- it doesn't really it, move. Yeah, it, it, does it does not move. move. It doesn't move. Its head like moves. It, it'll back flail. And forth, yeah. But- and that's that's its one mouth thing. opens and closes. It's that's got a lot of teeth. That's, that's one thing with this movie. Like we were talking about the like seizure inducing flashing in this Boy. movie. They use that to cover any sort of like close up or like anything actually interacting with each other. They use those flashes to cover it up. You can't see shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because in that scene, shit. the thing is, it's like sitting on a on a like a, a an outcropping, a rock. It's sitting on yeah. a ledge. Yeah, and it is like supposed to. And I got what happened, I guess. So it was successful, I suppose. What happens is the thing somehow, you know, when they go to attack it, it leaps off and it jumps through a sewer grate, yeah. busts through there, jumps down, and then reaches back up and grabs uh, the scientist. Now, so when I Colin that says that it happened, jumps off, he's right. giving it a lot <laughs> yeah. of... Uh, it falls. It yeah. Yeah. Well, what did you actually Nothing. see? No, Nothing. you saw. You see it. You, you saw yeah. a camera move in real quick. Yes. Yeah. And then you saw a dude go ah. Yes. And then you saw something break and something fall through it, and then the thing was gone. That's yeah. what you saw. And the like, editing. It's, yes. it's a master class in editing <laughs> when you can't do shit right with your monster. See, but this is where I like love this guy. Right. Shit, it's like. Well, we, uh, how are we going to get it to jump, yeah. Herman? We, <laughs> the thing Herman, wake like, up. Yeah, it's a couch. It doesn't jump. <laughs> right? Don't worry. We'll, we'll, we'll do it in, we in do shots. It. We can do this shot, this shot. We'll cut it together. Yes. We'll put some flash yeah, frames Bright lights. In there. They'll never know. Right. It'll be great. It cuts. We got it. Some kind of, you know, yeah, people sound. going, Rah. Yep. We did get like that scene of it, like half poking its head out of the hole, like after it landed, you know, mm. kind of like. Stuck its little head out for a yeah. second and then went back down. Yeah, which but reminded was... me of Jedi, and that's why I was surprised. Yeah, that this I came was first. like, Seri- this, yeah, the Star Wars, yeah, yeah, the parallels are very obvious. Very obvious. <laughs> well, you got to borrow from the best, I guess. I, I mean, well, yeah. Well, it, the it thing depends. ends up going through the air ducts and then ends up in uh, the control the room, control sitting room? on top of the control panel. Yeah. I guess. Well, it somehow it okay. This felt like. Little Shop of Horrors. Or yes. uh, in a way, Sphere. Because at some point, <laughs> oh, oh, God. The, the two girls <laughs> determine that the thing, because oh, it's boy. it may be wired into the computer. This is so after their shower scene. After yeah. the shower. Well, in the shower is when they get the idea. I mean, right. that's when I do all my best that's, thinking. Yes, for the best thinking. <laughs> best ideas. Um, and so, best brainstorming meetings happen in the shower. Right. There is a lot of dialogue that takes place in this naked shower really scene. does. Where Holly's like, they're going to kiss, aren't they? At some point, there's going to be. And I'm surprised, as much as you are, yes. that it doesn't go that way. Like, there, it, it is not a sexual scene. It is no. just two <laughs> naked women. It it really is it, just it washing, washing each hair, yeah. hair. Talking. It's really just talking slime science. over yeah. here, yeah. giving you a lot of exposition. Yep. This is what Game because of Thrones like, would do years later. Yeah, because they're like, this is going to be boring as shit. We should at least show them boobs while it's happening. Uh-huh. I don't. Know. That's why I'm like, I don't. I get the feeling you guys aren't behind this, but this is brilliant <laughs> stuff. Right? That's why I'm like, okay, <laughs> this is genius level. Like, what are we going to do? We can't. We got no money. We got we can't nothing. Do nothing. Showers. Have her take her clothes off. That's the cheapest special effect that <laughs> I money can this, buy. <laughs> this is a this is a meeting in in Roger Corman's office at some point, and people start yelling like, "I don't know, have her take her clothes off." Yeah. <laughs> That's how most of those movies mm-hmm. happen. I'm guessing. Well, mm-hmm. it was written by Jim Winorski. Do we say? Ah, uh, he's on the wall, right? He is on the wall. This one actually gives him a fourth place okay. on the wall. Yeah, he deserves. What's to be he on, on the wall, wall for? for? He's uh, well, he's for uh, we got this. We got uh, what uh, Slumber Party Massacre two. Yep. Which uh, he directed. Chopping Mall. Which he directed. Yep. He also one. wrote Sorceress. Ah, I'm learning how I feel course. about this guy really quickly. <laughs> all right. He has a, a a style, a theme, things he likes. Knocking off other things, but mm-hmm. calling sure. it something right. unrelated. He's made yeah. a career out of that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's, this oh, is yeah. the guy, Jim Winorski. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Jim Winorski. I know. God at some point, him. have we had? I think in the last thing on Chopping Mall, we talked about Jim Winorski. We so have. We have. Talked that's about our Jim, Jim Winorski, Winorski ad nauseum. Like we have listed his credits on almost every show that he's been featured on. Yeah. Because <laughs> in case you haven't been following, yeah, he is, yes. he's listening to the show with a fat cigar right now. <laughs> you got damn right. <laughs> like going, yep. I'm making another one too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Maybe he Evil did Bong one of those like Piranha Conda movies. Yeah, he I, did. I, I, I think he. I think Colin, he did, he did Piranha Conda. <laughs> did he? Yes. <laughs> That's a Jim Winorski movie. I'm pretty sure. 
Um, but anyway, so the 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 girls get the idea that they're gonna they're gonna talk to if we could just communicate with it because the thing is what it is because uh, the protoplasm or whatever uh, infected one or no they they impregnated like protein the scientists yeah. actually impregnated one of their crew members who volunteered for this experiment to try and give birth to this like mutant thing insanity. And of course, it absorbed her and became this thing. So uh, it's part human, uh, part all nightmare. Sorry, part yeah, alien, part, part human, alien, all nightmare, part human, you know? all, nightmare. all nightmare. And so they, uh, uh, Barb goes up and starts typing in the computer. Like, can you understand me? Mm-hmm. You know, give us a sign if you can understand us. To which it starts playing like dance music in yeah. all yeah. the 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 speakers of the ship. I still say that was a missed opportunity. Should have played some Marvin Gaye. Or something. Just just something. go for it. Uh, but the electronic music. That would have cost it. money, cost Holly. Money. Yeah. I'm, okay, something like Marvin Gaye. Right. Just go for the full seduction scene. I'm sure that this th- Corman has a library of public domain music, right? And that's what they pick for. Oh, he reuses everything. stuff because he reused the, the Battle Beyond the Stars theme, which was by James Horner. He reused that in Sorceress and I think something else. <laughs> I mean, he has, the man has no shame. None. <laughs> so uh ironically and i have not seen this but on this dvd set that we have or blu-ray set there's mm. a second disc and on that is the director's cut so apparently what originally the happened unrated was cut. the unrated cut the original cut has humor in it you so think the guys i don't jerking know off in that cut I doubt instead it. of playing with a toy <laughs> no i feel like we get more scientists in it though yeah, or something funny. Something like, there could be more fly. something let's, more funny let's, in this let's, scene. All right, let's use quotes. Yeah. Funny. Yeah. Funny, funny yeah. is relative, especially. Because I doubt anything is funny right. in this movie. Yeah. Well, I, but, they, well, I guess when when they preview screened it, mm. uh, people were laughing. Roger Corman didn't like that because he's like, this is a serious, you know, alien movie. This we're going after business. aliens. <laughs> we want the audience of alien. People are laughing. So he had them recut the movie and take all the humor out of it mm. oh damn yeah so there is a longer version now available the, the director's <laughs> original version which that colin humor. will Guess never what? watch people were laughing either watch. way <laughs> yeah you know, well, I'm gonna watch it. he can take all the jokes out that doesn't mean people still won't laugh well yeah. they laugh at it now i don't know if they were laughing at it then yeah, I, or if I they I were just the like this is a bad movie now we can laugh at it because you know i mean yeah, it's I'd one of those it. entertaining bad movies sure. but um but anyway uh, the creature does communicate with Barb, <laughs> and it talks back to her. Yeah. What did it say? And she sa- she says, "Can we coexist?" And it said, "Stand by, <laughs> please, please stand by." And then it it, it it slowly releases a tentacle towards her, and it feels like it's going to be inappropriately sexual. Like this is if we have if we in can, this movie, if, no, no I, way. Well, well, that's what I'm saying. I'm if we can gauge be... the movie where it's going to go by what's happened, this is going to yep. be inappropriately yeah. sexual with this alien and her. I think it was. I, I think it was well, too. Where, well, but, and it, yeah. but it impaled her. Yeah. That's yeah. the difference. I, I thought it, it was going to penetrate her, not impale her. I yes. think it penetrated. Well, it and did. Impaled. No, that's what I'm saying. No, like, it, yeah. I thought it was there, but I thought, I thought there was, was going to be a more a sexual part to it. I thought it was just penetration and not a full on. I didn't know we were going to do an. I didn't know she was going to be. I killed. thought it was just going to yeah. be like, yeah, we can coexist. Yeah. They baby. just kind of pulled their with the aftermath of she of her dead. They pulled their punches by not putting a bunch of gore like you know on her legs and you know no, but they right. just on her, blood. Yeah, it was just yeah. on her head and all that. So you're like, yeah. what happened? Did the thing come up behind her and like right in the back? Yeah, and you could read it that way. Spray blood for ten minutes. Galaxy of Terror is well known for a scene in which a giant uh, worm. Like has sex with a fully naked woman. Sure. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So this is a recurring theme. Uh. So anyway. So it's up to Mike and uh. Tracy. Tracy. Tracy, Tracy Baxter. Say, Teresa. No. Tracy Baxter. Tracy Baxter. And Cal. Right. He's still alive at this point. Although oh. he gets electrocuted <laughs> because. Cal? Oh yeah. The. I mean, I'm assuming he's the engineer or something, or yeah. like what his function is. He's an engineer. Yeah, it's the Wait. same same job that Yafit Koto was doing. In- Are we talking about the we're talking about the black dude? Yeah. yeah. Okay, because then because then there's still the scientist at this point too. Oh, that's right. Oh yeah, the mad scientist who's still who going. has, yeah, this motherfucker, this guy, still going. Yeah, so he's got cancer. He's he's been smoking the whole way through, the, and every he's scene it's hacking the whole wonderful. Way. Yeah. Every scene somehow a cigarette ends up in his hand. It's within cuts. 
Like something will happen to him, and then he'll be explaining something because that's his job. And the cigarette is just there yeah. in his fingers. It's miraculous and it's wonderful. He's got the glasses, you know, down on his right, nose, yes. the blood yeah. all over his uh, the hair. His, yeah, tousled. Yeah. Um. So he's got cancer. So his uh, he comes up with a way to kill the monster, <laughs> which is to basically feed the monster his cancer. He does a test of this where he takes some cells and injects it into yeah. one of the melty gooey guys yeah. because. The monster is turning people into goo so it can eat them later. Right. right. Um, we're it's we're, we're it's plants or it's vegetable garden or what do he say? He's, it was something he's like planting that. a garden. He's trying, and we are the seeds. He, yes, yeah. and he's trying to create an endless supply of food. I guess the point is that once you do this to a human being, they will continue to multiply and divide themselves like a cell. Yeah. And so he will have an endless supply of food. Yep. That is okay. the point I'm with of what it. this I'm monster is doing. I'm with it too. I'm well, with he, it, and just because you know we're transforming humans into goo, and it's fucking cool looking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know those little red veiny things around yeah. If they moved, it, it, like extra level of yeah, like, right, yeah. Just I like what they did. Just yeah. that one yeah. shot where like the science is sitting there and look over and the fucking skulls like because <sighs> <laughs> he's still alive. Because he's still fucking alive. He's, he's a puddle of goo, but he's right. still alive. I yeah. love that idea. Right. I saw that in a swamp thing That's comic wonderful. once. It's yep. like even though you're spread out all over the walls, yeah, still you're alive. Still alive. Wonderful. It is um, cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's gross. <laughs> uh, oh, it's very gross and gushy and blah, 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 blah. so not does he doesn't actually want to inject his cancer cells into the creature. He no, says no. he wants to feed the creature his tumor. Yeah. Yep. So he enlists uh Mike Colby, man of action, to cut him open, no anesthetic. With a box and, cutter. With a box cutter. Well, Everyone how else are you gonna do it? Everyone laser cutter scalpel? He's a doctor, right? He got shit around somewhere. Yeah, but in the control they room. Yeah, they couldn't go find yeah. it. Yeah, because the thing is out in the hallway. The other one, right? Isn't there another thing like out in the hallway? Is there two or is it the same one? Oh, it's one? the big giant know. one. Right, yeah, because yeah. it gets out of the cocoon and there's yeah. the big giant one. Yeah. It looks like the actual alien. That's its third, uh, fourth uh, version. Sure. This is what it borrows from Alien, right? The fact that the alien keeps on changing. Yeah, yeah metamorph. Um, so it's a metamorph. So yeah, he slices him open in like a painful kind of looking scene. It has to reach into the guy, pull this like glob of shit out of and rip. Like you don't cut it out oh. surgically. You just grab a, just, and a rip tumor it into and rip. <laughs> yeah, like you're gutting a pumpkin. Yeah, That's everything's yeah. Like snapping and popping behind it. Ugh. It's gross. They're, Everyone in yeah. space is insane. The woman who's just like, yeah, I'm pregnant. I mean, it'd be fine. <laughs> and this guy who's just like yeah I'll just pull my liver out yeah, yeah it's know, fine it's fine I'm just like no I will either be eaten by this monster or I will live you're not just gonna sit there and cut me open and take out my yeah, organs yeah but that have been a better way would you have just sacrificed said like fuck it let it eat me it will get my cancer by eating me you don't have to cut me open I'm gonna die anyway I'm I would not sit jump there and voluntarily mouth. have someone cut me open and take out my liver <laughs> Maybe we all die or something or have to blow That's up the ship. That's what makes but, him a hero, Sean. Uh, it makes him an idiot. <laughs> it does kill him. He doesn't survive yeah. it. But uh, he's I right, know, though. I don't know if he was hoping to, but yes, he is right. Because Duder feeds the downfall this of our uh, yeah. baseball-sized tumor to the creature by shoving it in its mouth. Should have lost an arm. Yeah. Should have lost an arm. Yeah. There's no way you're putting your hand in that mouth mm. with those teeth yeah. and not losing an arm. Yeah, that would have been better. It would have been better. That would have been better. Yeah. Okay, nice. But the thing then melts. Throws up a lot. Yeah. And it it's, oozes like, alka foams at the mouth. There's a lot of yeah. oozing in this foams movie. Foams at the mouth. The sounds are... This movie's fucking gross. Disgusting. Really gross. Because apparently the sound effects... It was a sound effects lady. She shoved a microphone in, like into her throat and made those like... <laughs> She, so, de she deep throated uh, a microphone to make that noise. Yeah, hey, you had do what you gotta do. Sound, yeah. All Foley right. artists are dedicated, man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is art. Clearly. <laughs> this is art, Holly. <laughs> the unsung heroes. You do <laughs> what you need to do to make dying giant spider noises. Yeah. I believed it. That yeah. thing sounded horribly that sounded like uh, so, yeah. gross and in pain. And You're living in someone's throat. Yeah. Why did I? And then uh, the movie uh, gives us a bunch more flash cuts, only this time they're not showing us the future but no, it's showing you the movie it's that recapping you just watched. the movie it's recapping the entire movie mm -hmm. in the same sort of flashback sequence as the beginning yeah i thought that it may be I, uh because they needed some kind of big oomph at the end and they didn't have it and because and they like, still don't have it well the way that they shot it it's like the thing drops it oozes a bunch of goo and then you sh you cut to the hero and the heroine you know embracing staring you know at the thing as the camera pulls back and somebody was like we need something explosive. <laughs> you so they did it with heroin. editing. 
What? Tracy brought the, uh, she got into the, when did she bring in the morphine? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she was a little late, her. but she brought the, um, I know she can't find clothes after the shower. I, I love this decision. So just in a robe. Yeah. How did I, towel. I'm shocked, shocked, I tell you, that she did not lose that robe at some point. So am I. Shocked. Yeah. Like the monster wasn't just like, <laughs> yeah. And she's like, ah, oh, I've lost my room. Mm-hmm. I might have given an extra point for that. Something. That's what I thought. I was like, is this right. just or when catch I thought on when something. the hand grabbed her uh-huh. before she yes. ripped it off the body, I thought that robe was going. Wait, yeah, that scene was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> she's getting close to this guy who's you know turning the goo. Yeah, on a on a stretcher or whatever. He's, He's on the table. Goes. He's dying. Yeah. But the, his hand grabs her, and so she's like, bah, bah. she pulls away, and the hand comes off and comes with. It was gross. Yeah. It was yeah. gross. So gross. This movie is full of like some fantastic yes. moments. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, we should probably talk about it. We talked about this movie enough. So what we're gonna do is uh, we are gonna tell you individually. We're gonna review this movie. Uh, but first of all, we're gonna read some of your mail, and to do that, we're gonna have to summon our mailman, Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Thanks, Igor. Should I yell at him next time? Like, like I yell at you guys, Igor. (laughs) I mean, only if he doesn't come the first time. Instead of the clapping, sure. Wait, does everybody at home know that uh, Sean? supplies those claps he does I do. every week every time unless sean's not here in which case i do it but it's yeah, usually sean the there's your peek behind the curtain there it is <laughs> this week there it is i yell and i clap um, and that's feel free to tell him if he's doing a good job right yeah, now. yeah. please if you did, are his claps too if, loud or is too enough is yeah is it too much yeah I don't know. I think it's at least. Will Igor minimum. respond to someone else's claps? I mean, he, uh-huh. Holly, he I mean, responds to yours. He does mine. But I think he's just like, oh, Sean's not here. So yeah. Holly's the one I'm supposed to listen yeah. to. Now. Right. Is there an order? Yeah. It's, yeah. I don't think he'll ever it's listen like to It's like when me, you have so. a dog and the dog is like, obeys one master yeah. a little bit more. No, than yeah. The other that's one. My, my, it's my house. Yeah. Right. It's the same thing. It's, it's not like, me that it's he like, obeys. It's like, okay, dad's not home, so I have to listen to mom. Yeah, exactly. So does he like begrudgingly bring the mail when you guys are I think so. I think here? so. He just, he, just kind of, he just kind of throws it at us. Yeah. 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 You're like, not my real dad. Yeah. Like, <laughs> You're not my real mom. Look, like, thanks, yeah. Igor. Yeah. Yeah. He just kind of. Okay. It's good to yeah. know. Thanks, Igor. Well, why don't we tell the oh, fine folks too. at home how they can get a hold of us mm. on uh, Facebook. Facebook.com slash Giant Freak Show. Can they get a hold of us on Twitter? They can at at Sad Freak Show. How about by email? Sure can. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. And on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. You know what? They can also leave uh, comments on YouTube. That's yes, awesome. they go can. To YouTube. Yeah. YouTube. You should definitely go to YouTube <laughs> and watch every single one of our podcasts. I mean, sure, Apple. On YouTube. Yeah, sure, Apple and Stitcher, blah, blah, blah. But YouTube. <laughs> YouTube. Go to YouTube. And apparently CastBox. We're big on there. Okay, anyway. Uh, so it's about the best. Um, Forbidden World. Oh, yeah. I wrote down some stuff and I forgot to tell you. Oh, you can you tell us right now, Colin. Uh, this movie was up for, th- it was nominated for three Saturn Awards. Oh, in 1983 oh, didn't it win one? for Best Low Budget Film, Best Makeup, and Best Special Effects. Yeah. And it was yeah. remade by Roger Corman's company, New Horizons, or whatever he called it after New World Pictures, yeah. in 1991 as Dead Space. Oh, right. Have you seen this? Because it stars it. Uh, Mark huh. Singer and Brian Cranston. What? God damn. Brian Cranston is the doctor. Why are we not God watching that it. version? I have to watch this now. <laughs> I watched Shit. the trailer. Does it have nudity? I don't know. Huh. Shit. Brian right. Cranston, man, he's well, popping up in all sorts of interesting places. Yeah. Yep. Well, uh, MF Mad, who is the keeper. The keeper of the wall. Mm-hmm. What is the wall that we're talking about? It's our wall of fame. Uh, if someone appears in a significant role uh, three or more times on the freak show. How dare you? How dare you say significant role? That, it's that the wall. Not, okay. The, we have the hallway of fame for the <laughs> lesser. Yeah. You got to get to the wall. Or, or to dir- get to the wall, you got to walk through the yeah, hallway. Or directors yeah. can also be on the wall. Yeah. All right. Well, tell me where this guy falls. The wall or hallway? Scott Pollan was in this movie. Hallway. Uh, hallway. He hallway. Was, uh, <laughs> just going by name alone. Yeah. Well, he was what the was security in? dude. Oh, oh, the, the, the masturbator? Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. The non-masturbator he, masturbator. Was, yeah. <laughs> uh, he was also in Cat People, which we did on the show. Yeah. Mm, and he no. was the Red Skull in Captain America. Oh, oh shit. shit. That guy was the Red Skull? <laughs> That's pretty awesome. <laughs> Holy shit. My American brother. Uh, yeah, that was him. You, you and my brother. Uh, yeah. <laughs> blah. 
<laughs> no, he's that's a hallway. That dude's hallway. All, right, hallway. all the way. Hallway. Hallway. Yeah. All the way. Hallway. Uh, so Fresno Film Buff writes in about tonight's movie and says, uh, enjoy the shamelessly gratuitous nudity. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> That should just be the tagline for the movie. Yeah, it, it really should be. Should be. <laughs> it should, it should go be straight for your audience. Like enjoy. Yeah, when we turned it on, Holly was like, "Was this a theatrical?" Because <laughs> it looks like a yeah. porn for a, it looks a like good chunk of the. It movie. looks hey, like cinema. Well, you get released back. on Forty Second yeah. Street. The, yeah, there you go. this is the drive-in and grindhouse there era, <laughs> right there. Um, okay, I'm gonna massacre seats. your name, sir. Appy L says I haven't seen it. And I can't say, oh, I was asking, uh, what's the best alien ripoff? Oh, and yeah, he yeah. says uh, he hasn't seen Forbidden World, but he can't say oh, Dan O'Bannon and John Carpenter's Dark Star is an alien ripoff because it's a precursor to Alien as an O'Bannon story. So he says mm-hmm. he supposed life with uh, Ryan Reynolds and Jake Gyllenhaal yeah. mm-hmm. uh, is an alien ripoff. Yeah, yeah. that's what Alien so. Covenant should have been. It's life. life. That would have been the better version. Do you ever, do you remember like when everybody thought that life was like Sony's backdoor Venom? Yeah. Work? Yes. Uh, yeah. Like that would have been awesome. People were it dying been, on that hill. It would have made that movie better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, anything like at the end like that would have just blown people's fucking minds. Yeah. When, when like people boo, when they Venom. fucking do that shit and pull it off, it's mind blowing. Yeah. yeah. And they really should have. Yeah. They should have yeah. just done it. Yeah. yeah. It, it could only make it better. As soon people, as people started talking about it, they yeah. just should have said, fuck it, we should rewrite the ending of this movie. Should have done it. They, all, they, all they would have had to do was like add one little thing onto the end. I would have still been applauded yeah. in that movie. Just like, <laughs> fuck yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, you did it. Well, especially no one like knew. coming off the heels of, uh, that was the same year as Split, right? Yeah. yeah. So coming off of Split, having that ending that did that, then they could have been like, oh yeah, we'll warn up you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right, was well, uh, about uh, last week's movie, which was Kingdom of the Spiders. Uh, mm-hmm. Michael Whitaker writes in and says, movies like this and Day of the Animals are actually pretty good, in theory anyway. They both seem to be marred by ridiculous execution. What? That's ridiculous what? execution? What? Well, he says the ridiculous it, is what makes it good. He I, says uh, it would be cool if someone could remake these instead of the movies, or these kind of movies instead of good ones. Although he guesses that they kind of did with arachnophobia and the TV series Zoo. And yeah, Legged Freaks. That TV series Zoo is kind of worth watching. It's not good. Is it? It's not good. And it's all horrible CGI. But the concept is interesting enough to carry it pretty far. Is that an so. animal attack? Uh, yeah, it's a, it's like a, it's it's like a James a, Patterson story, it Colin. It was adapted into a TV series about like all the zoo animals are just turning on people Whoa, and killing them. CBS. Yeah, it was, yeah it was on network TV. That's the problem. It was on it's network summer TV. summer CBS show. Mm-hmm. A summer show. So a it was summer a CBS garbage show. dump. Is that like a recent thing? Is yeah, it, more it was like a year or two ago, I uh, think. Yeah. yeah, about two years ago. I think the second season or third season mm-hmm. went on. So mm-hmm. there may be another season of it? Coming I soon? doubt it. I don't know. That's might summer be done stuff, with man. I think there's another book coming out. Oh, uh-huh. oh James Patterson's writing another book. Can you imagine so. that? I Dude, know, like right? fucking 400 oh books under his name. Jesus. Well, about the week before that, copycat Simon Carter writes in and says, I fucking love this movie when it was released. It was great to see Sigourney Weaver playing a more vulnerable character. I would love to comment intelligently on the film in general, but I'm very drunk right now, and I'm simply <laughs> looking forward to listening to the episode. Oh, you're I'm sorry, did, did I, to did I on write it. myself a mail? <laughs> 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 I love it. To be fair, he did write back and clarify himself, but okay. that was a novel. So uh, Grant <laughs> Parrish says, uh, okay, so we were asking on uh, social media uh, because copycat is kind of part of the thriller of the psychiatrist as protagonist sure. movie yes. yep. yeah. of the 1990s. And he said, uh, Grant says, uh, you know, we asked him, what's another one that you can think of? He said, he was going to say the cell, but that came out in 2000, but it, Still, it was the first movie that came to mind when you guys were talking about this. Yeah, he says 1945 it's still there. Made had, in 1999. Probably. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Uh, he says uh, 1945 had Spellbound, which might be the prototype of this genre. Oh, oh yeah. I yeah. have seen that. Yeah. I totally forgot I had seen that movie. It's Cary Grant, right? Uh-huh. I did see that. Yeah. Or is it Lawrence Olivier? No, that's Rebecca. Yeah. Cary yeah. Grant, Carrie Spellbound. Grant. They're on the mountain, the mm-hmm. ski resort. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Alfred Hitchcock. It's a good movie. You yep. should go check it out. Yep. Uh, he also wants to say that, uh, okay, so answering us, he says, this guy, I think the picture's upside down. Uh, this guy, because we were asking, <gasps> send us your dogs or your cats. Oh, he sent baby. us a cat. Oh, he says, your cat picture. Yay, kitty. He says his fat, fat lazy kitty. guy is Cicero. He, has <laughs> a, he says he hasn't seen Copycat, but he loves the movie Prey, a Bridget <laughs> Monaghan <laughs> Peter Weller flick that is basically Cujo, but with lions. He says, every time the lions roared, my kitty was enthralled. 
Reminding me of myself watching a superhero movie. Aww. It's important for kids to have strong role models. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to put that movie on my list. That's amazing. Like Pray? I love I it. I've seen that. Well, Cinematic Living, uh, we were asking, uh, what's your favorite um, Harry, Harry Connick Jr. Uh, part? He says uh, Memphis Bell was his. Yeah. And uh, we said, you know, what's your favorite uh, Sigourney Weaver uh, yeah. role? Which, of course, we're going to go like, well, you know, right? But uh, Sarah Aw says uh, she'll always be Ripley to me. Mm-hmm. I'll take, yeah. yeah, I'll take Alien. I'll also take Ghostbusters. And Ghostbusters. I'll take that. Those are the yeah. two. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Although, like we said in the comments, no one's going to say the show. end of Cabin in the Woods. <laughs> I mean, I, I love I, I love Cabin that in the was, Woods. That was, yeah. that I was, love that it. Made that movie. Uh-huh. For me that was such a great up. cameo. Working girl, come on. <laughs> I'm going to bring it up again. She's right. great. That's a horrible boss. <laughs> I still think she's in a movie called Half Moon Street with Michael Caine, or she might be a prostitute. I'm just saying. I don't know. All right. I mean, so, I don't know enough to yeah. argue <laughs> with you on that. Yeah. Sure. Sure, Colin. Colin. Yes, okay. that movie does exist. Maybe it was Bob yeah. Haskins, or I'm getting something else mixed up. Oh, All right. Uh, so we, we uh, speaking of Sigourney Weaver, we, we kept talking about her, how much we loved her in the past thing. We completely forgot Galaxy Quest. Yeah. Oh, like, she's yeah. She's fucking great. Mm-hmm. She is a great in Galaxy In Quest. that great movie. Just putting that out. You owe it yep. to yourself mm-hmm. to see. Uh, you do. Quest. I just wanted to uh, mm-hmm. continue our appreciation for Sigourney Weaver and mention that. There you go. Because goddamn. But there it is. All right. Well, so there. now we're going to go around the room and we're going to tell you what we thought of Forbidden World, starting with Michaela. <laughs> you, you say we don't trust you, and then yeah, I'm, you just, make us wait. T- all right, so I just be right at the mic. Fine. All right. I, I mean, yeah, dead air in a podcast is like, really that awesome. Was your thing. You're going to be yelling every week. <laughs> you never know what's going on, with Michaela. <laughs> We're just expecting you. You set the standard. We're holding yeah. you to it. Uh, so yeah. I can change it if I want to. demands it at this point. Charles. Yeah. So, Michaela, what did you think about tonight's movie, Forbidden World? Uh, there are Corman movies I really like, and there are ones that don't work as well for me. This is unfortunately one of the ones that doesn't work as well for me. Humanoids of the Deep is fucking awesome. And I think that's a good summertime watch, even though... It seemed like they were really cold on the beach in that yeah, movie. Yeah, it I think did. it's because it's a carnival. I've kind of been thinking yeah. about like, like my summer horror movie <laughs> double features. I've kind of been like planning them out and how I want to watch them this summer. Mm-hmm. I, uh, side note: I think the perfect combination is The Lost Boys and The Wraith. I think if you watch those two back, that's a good combo. You can get like the beach in the desert, and you get yeah. like sci-fi haircuts. and horror and lots of good eighties fashion. That's my yeah, perfect. That's good a good combo. Yeah. I like that's that. That's my perfect summer double yeah. feature. <laughs> so some drive and hire me to program your shit. At some point, we're gonna like just have a movie night. We're gonna <laughs> yeah, watch barbecue. Or... This yeah. Is yeah. yeah, some right? drive-in needs to hire me to do their summer programming. That would be good. <laughs> Imagine if the drive-in like put the wraith on there. I know. That's great. That'd be great. Do a classic car night and show the wraith. We could do the wraith and Death Race two thousand. Yeah. There you go. Yes. Uh, anyways Forbidden World Um, it's really goopy and I like that I just kept thinking about like all the lint falling on that goop and like how icky it would be hair getting stuck to it and nasty shit like that Uh, so it's gross and it's a very tactile and textured movie and that is awesome the effects are fucking cool especially because like you wouldn't expect that from this type of movie however the marketing materials are a lie the poster is a lie Nothing I'm looking at on this Blu-ray happens in this movie. There's like a big Cthulhu monster and fire on it. But um, that's the bug and the no, naked woman. Oh my god, that's, that's not naked woman. Is true. <laughs> it has giant wings and it's huge that and standing is not over in her. The movie. It's not in the movie at all. <laughs> no. Um, I found the story uh, really difficult to follow and yes. almost non-existent. Didn't really get the point of why anything was happening. Um, it's not a good movie. Uh, it just didn't work for me. I can totally understand why you, some people would like it and why it might be your thing. Not for me, but there are good things about it. Holly. Yeah, I I have been going back and forth on this one because it does have some elements that I really enjoyed. Like Michaela said, it's it's gross. It is disgusting, which, as you may remember, I happen to love. Like, I brought Dead Alive. I love that goopy shit. It's, it's my wheelhouse. You know, I love it, but... I, I I agree. There's so much like uh, if there is a plot, I don't know what it was. I could not follow this story. Like as I'm, clearly we're talking about it, and I'm like, did they explain that? Did we ever hear that? Like I still don't understand so much of this movie, and uh, I don't know. I'm I'm really torn because there were parts that I really liked. I thought it was really fun, and then there's other parts like the like 
seriously, the f- I can't stress enough how awful the, the flashing lights in this movie oh, were. It is good. seriously like seizure and do like I my head is still hurting. Mm-hmm. It's it's bad. Yeah, but think of the, the guy with the one eye and the teeth and the, the other guy. I didn't see it, and- Colin, because of the flashing. Oh. <laughs> like it's so much flashing. Like I, when it would start, I would literally just have to like look away for a minute because it was just mm-hmm. so bad. And I understand like the tactics of using that so that you can cover things that they couldn't actually orchestrate properly. I get it. And then I, I applaud you for actually doing that. But at the same time, like it made me not be able to watch this movie. Really? Like, I don't know. Well, it's I, not uh, constant it's for the, for the theater in, in the moments, in some moments it is yeah, yeah, yeah. in some moments it's it is constant. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. like, Jesus Christ. Like I really can't watch this, this part. Like it's just too much. But like I said, there are parts that I really like. I'm so torn. I really don't know what to say right now. I'm I'm torn. Uh, I I feel like nothing's right. I'm all right, what can I, I what can I say? I know, like, I know, to, I know. To bring you over, I have to get off the pod, Hallie. <laughs> I know, I know. No, mm. uh, we've all been here. Goopy alien I monsters know. in space. But also like the the gratuitous nudity, like they didn't really go for it. It was just nudity, just to be nude. Like that's, that's the least, 80s. Nudity, yeah. yeah, I know, but at least. Go for it a little more. But like, they're trying to be classy, Holly. No, no, they weren't. <laughs> no, they it's fucking weren't. Classy 80s sleaze. No. Where it's like they don't go. Classy sleaze. Yeah. Okay, I may be cl- okay. Classy sleaze is not my, my not my thing. If no, you're gonna it's not classy, if you're gonna be sleaze, this is a trashy. Like, yes, it is. <laughs> Thank trash. you. Yes. Trash. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? I didn't like the monster, so I'm gonna pass. <laughs> there it <laughs> <There he> goes. <laughs> there it is. Um. I also did not understand what was happening yeah. in this movie, um, but you know what? For me, doesn't matter because this movie <laughs> is on the front. It says Roger Corman's cult classics, and I think if you see that, <laughs> and if you see you, that, you it's see misleading that you, in this case. Ah, I think you know what you're gonna get, and for this, you get you, you get a, you get a cheap movie, but you get uh. You get some really good stuff in this. I mean, I, I I got what I wanted from this movie. I got cool special effects. It's goopy, but it's fucking again when that skeleton is alive and looking at you and breathing. Yeah, it's great. Sold, <laughs> done. I'm like, that's cool. It's actually, I think, a a well shot movie. Um, that maybe that's just me, but that's just I think you. there's some okay. There's <laughs> some good shots in this movie. Maybe I'll put it that way. They're trying to yeah. <laughs> there's like, some good shots in this movie. I'm just like the that's overhead good. stuff that they were doing, where like it went through like the three like what yeah. you see in like Snake Eyes or Minority Report. The, yeah, like they, they followed a character through like three sets. Right overhead. There is there's some overhead shots like where I'm just like, what's she doing there? Yeah. When they're just above a group as they're talking, like, ah, you guys didn't shoot coverage for any of this, did you? Yeah, but they're trying to mix it up so it looks right. They are because unique, you, you know. realize that later when it shows them they're cutting to this angle for them talking, and then he's talking to a different character and they cut to this angle and everything. So I think, but I think it's, uh, sh- I've seen a lot worse for like this budget of a movie. So mm-hmm. th- I think it's shot pretty well. Again, uh, the effects are great. Um, hey, there's nudity. I mean, if you're going for that ex- exploitation quotient, well, you it feels got it like right a there. significant amount. It's a lot. Wait, did we mention that it's John Carl Beekler? Oh, yeah, we didn't mention that yet. John Carl Beekler is, did the effects for this movie. May he rest in peace. Mm-hmm. Um, which, bravo to him, because I think they're fantastic. Um, some goopy goodness in here. The monster is uh, ridiculously not good. Yeah, um, it's, it's just a bad yeah. monster. But you know what? <laughs> When you when you get two robed women going in there trying to converse with this really awful monster, I mean, it's just like that enjoyment part of it. Please stand by. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh. I got everything I wanted out of this movie, so I'm gonna recommend it because uh, you know I was satisfied. So uh, I recommend uh, Forbidden World. Uh, I had a good time watching it. I want to watch, <laughs> for better or for worse, I want to watch the unrated version. Just to see. <laughs> I just think it's on like see. a VHS copy or something like that. I don't yeah. think they actually had like a. I don't know. I got to watch. Restore, yeah, I I would uh, I would watch this again. So yeah, I uh, I recommend. For well, they are putting out a steel book of this. Uh, Shop Factory is reissuing because uh, it turns out somehow uh, Corman and Shop Factory have entered into an agreement where they are now the theatrical agent mm. of all of these movies of new world pictures. So if you're a theatrical, right. uh, if you're a theater 
you can contact Shout Factory and, and get the you program the movies. And they've Shit. got like thirty of them or yeah, something. Yeah, there's like a really that. beautiful Humanoids of the Deep Steel book that's coming out. Too. Yeah, yeah. It's fucking and awesome. There are really Piranha wonderful. Yeah, and Galaxy of Terror. Yeah. I think they're putting those out. Yeah, folks. Yeah. <laughs> um, Get into it. Yeah, I I guess that's the thing. Like when I watched this movie, I had a lot of fun with it. I mean, I I thought you know because I, I was watching all these. You know, I'm like, you know, Aliens, 40th anniversary is coming up. It's coming back as a Fathom event or something like a TCM. Is putting it out in theaters. I'm like, that's how old it is. It's a fathom event now. Yeah, and I've seen it. I saw it in theaters when the director's cut came out. So right. that's like a, I have seen Alien in theaters, not like the it, on its original release. And right. I love that movie. It's awesome. But I mean, I know it so well front to back. And then I'm like, what am I going to do? For, it's the 40th anniversary of Alien. Well, I want to think about Alien, but I don't necessarily want to watch Alien, mm. right? Because I know it too well. So like, let's go yes. see these things I haven't seen, and we'll go back and watch all these like uh, Alien ripoffs. And, um, I mean, they all kind of vary in quality, you know, uh, they're all bad. I think uniformly they're all bad, but I had the most fun, I think with this one, because, uh, you know, you, you, like Sean said, it's like, you can see the, um, the, is it the chutzpah of the chutzpah, people yeah. who are working on this movie and trying to deliver something under crazy, uh, deadlines and pressure and, without any kind of resources trying to make an alien movie that's going to make them money. We got to crank this thing out, you know, but there's a lot of, uh, uh, talent, I think, uh, for, you know, just the, the guys in a warehouse working on this yeah. thing, like the special effects, Look what I they mean, did. it was nominated for a Saturn award for best special effects. Yeah. Uh, because, and I think that it deserves it because some of them, I mean, it's gross, goopy this is one of those like 80s practical effects movies only on a really low budget and i kind of wish that somebody would do something like this now you know what somebody has done something with, like this now and it was called the void you see the void oh, the astron six guys like did the yeah i liked it yeah or harbinger down was another one mm -hmm. where they're like Bring we're gonna up. and they were kind of well the, you know, but they're trying to do practical yeah. effects movies like this, which I, I guess, you know, it's the same mentality, but now, mm -hmm. um, uh, I never got bored by this movie because it was like, there's a space battle. Then he gets called to the, the plate and then there's like dead things all over. Then the thing gets loose and then we have to go. And there's the guy is like constantly explaining how the thing's changing and yes. now it's gone through here. And now we got another guy and he's melting and splitting apart and pieces are falling off this person. Or Barb like, is just looking at people. Yeah. Barb is sexy as hell. Yeah. And then there's like, just, then there's nudity when we're, if it starts to slow down a little bit, somebody's like getting fully <laughs> naked. Yeah. I will say, no I will say this movie moved at a nice clip. Yeah, it really because did. it's constantly giving you this is like a distillation, it feels like, of what those exploitation elements are. Mm -hmm. And I get more enjoyment out of watching a movie like this where it's like, I mean, now all of the stuff would be uh, all the effects work would be picture perfect CG, yeah. you know, or worst case scenario, it looks like you know playstation 2 graphics that's right. where you go now really. right no uh, i want it to look like somebody took apart a fucking vacuum cleaner and made a space station out of it yeah, yeah. that's fun because it's like it, the tactile so like thing that michaela was talking mm -hmm. about it's like it's not uh it doesn't look real right no yeah. but it looks like it's physically there and you know that it took somebody a lot of time to do it I think it takes people obviously a long time to create computer generated models and, you know, they have hair that do things and their clothes, you know, and the fur yeah. and all that. I think someone legitimately made a lot of jello for this movie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, but that's the thing. It's like yeah. but on a deadline, you know, or yeah. like, yeah, I know, you know I'm saying for making movies, the stresses are different under these different circumstances, but I appreciate this more, I think, because I can relate to it in some way. It's like you feel like, yeah, with a big enough oven and enough of the ingredient, I could make this thing. I could <laughs> bake the monster. Yeah. <laughs> you know, or would mine come off better or worse than this? I mean, I don't know. You know, so I kind of enjoy that kind of uh, pull yourself up by your bootstraps and here's the thing as it is. But I mean, again, it was entertaining uh, the whole way through it. I love the. Uh, the musical score again i keep talking about these scores it's this uh electronic thing that you know 
Uh, now the retro wave is basically doing it, but retro wave stuff now sounds like the score to forbidden world. Mm. Uh, you know, actually with all the lighting, cause there's a lot of like red and green pulsating lights, uh, toward the end of this movie. And I think it was a Holly said while we were watching, it's like, Oh no, this is like beyond the black rainbow beyond the black rainbow is a movie. I was uh, thinking that too. Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. did you say it? No, Maybe. I think no, I, Sean I was, said it, but we all agreed. Yeah, yeah I, was, I thought of Beyond the Black Rainbow when the title came up, and there was a there was a musical tone, yeah. an electronic mm-hmm. tone. I'm like, that's the Beyond the Black Rainbow. Like they use that same synthesizer yeah. right. thing. That tone and the color palette seems like it's yeah. very similar. There were yeah. several things I was like, yeah, this is very Black Rainbow. Yeah. Beyond the Black Rainbow is uh, the movie that was made by the guy who did Mandy, which I think Sean and I said was the best movie that came out last year. Yep. And God damn it, you should go watch it. Um, with Nicholas Cage, but the we're guy, talking about Mandy, not Mandy. Beyond the Black Rainbow. Mandy, right? Yeah. Well, I like Beyond the well, Black Rainbow, did. but I we get know. that that was not we a, uh, <laughs> a it didn't go over well here. But the, these are the type of movies that inform, uh, you know, yes. though the newer movies that are trying to like make a movie that should have existed in 1983. Uh, these are the it, these are what its contemporaries would have been. You know, um, I really dug this. I had a lot of fun with it. Uh, it's a cheesy, bad sci-fi movie for bad movie, you know, Saturday night. You could do a lot worse uh, than Forbidden World. I say you got to you got to you know, check this one out. It's uh, pretty cool. So <laughs> that brings us to the end of this. And that means next week we're going to be watching a movie that's chosen by Sean. What are we watching next week? Uh, from the mind of Bruce Lee. Oh, boy. We're going to watch a movie called Circle of Iron. What? Yeah. None of y'all know what this is. Circle of Iron. Nope, and that has me concerned. I know. <laughs> From the mind of Bruce Lee. From the mind of Bruce Lee. So and, we'll get, it and we'll get more into that next okay. week. Okay. All right. <laughs> Circle of Iron. Man. All right. Yep. Okay, you got me. Starring David Carradine. Oh, boy. Oh, oh <laughs> Christ. In many roles. And uh, Eli Wallach sent it to... Really? Uh, David yeah. Carradine in many roles? Is that what you just said? Yep. Okay. 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 I am intrigued. Like, rarely, Sean, <laughs> does anybody spring anything on me that I completely know. takes me off guard and this one has <laughs> done it so kudos to you so next week it's circle of iron not cross of iron no circle okay. of no, circle no. <laughs> of iron next week on the saturday night freak show we hope you'll join us and until then the basement is going dark